is criticizing or refuses to glorify Sri Guru. Just as if one has to go to the back side of his body. It's very, very uncomfortable. He can't do bhakti or anything. But once he passes it, then he feels free. So if we free ourselves from all bad association, have the good association of devotees who are dedicated to Sri Guru, and surrender our everything to him, then he gives us all bhakti, braj bhakti, and the service of Srimati Radhika. Gaur Premanandi. Time is 10 to 15 minutes only, because there are so many speakers. Now, Padmanabha Radhika. And secondly, I'm offering my equal Dandavat pranams and my Sharadha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Siksha Gurudevs, Nitilila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Sri Srila, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Sri Srila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Also, I'm offering my Dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of all of my Rupa Nuka Guru Varga and to all the uh, Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, friends and guests present, headed by the Tridandi Sanyasi Dham. So, on this Vyasa Puja day, <coughs> the appearance day of the representative of Srila Vyasa Dev. It is appropriate for us to understand the glories of both Guru Tattva and also the glories of the personality whom we are uh, honoring on this occasion and the contribution of that personality to the ongoing dissemination of the message of Godhead in this material world, the message of the Vedic truth, uh, the supreme reality uh, of Bhagavan, Bhagavad Tattva, uh, and the eternal relationship of all Jiva souls with the supreme personality of Godhead. So in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavan Sri Krishna himself is telling Acharya man vijaniyan, nava man yeta karihi chit, namartya buddhya suyeta, 
Sarvadeva Mayo Guru. He is telling there, Acharya Mam Vijaniyam. You should understand that actually I myself, I am the Acharya. It is I who am manifesting as this personality in the form of an Acharya. Nava Manye Takarhi Chit. That personality, known as the Guru, the Acharya, he should never be disrespected, ever. Namartya Buddhya Suyeda. One should not think of him in terms of the uh, mundane intelligence, Martya Buddhi, thinking that he is of the mortal world like all ordinary beings of this world, that he has come into this world by force of circumstance, as all jivas are taking their birth and dying in the course of the cycle of samsara. So one should never think, Sri Krishna is telling, that the acharya, who is not different than my very self, uh, is an ordinary mortal of this world. Because Sarva Deva Mayo Guru, Sri Guru is actually the sum total of all the glories and qualities of all the devatas. Why? Because <clears throat> he is actually Sakshat Haritvena Samashta Shastra. Chilvishana Chakavarni Thakur has expressed this principle, this Guru Tattva principle, that Sakshat Haritvena, that Sri Guru is actually a manifestation of Hari, of the Supreme Lord Hari. Hmm? And this is supported by all the Vedic literatures. It is declaring this truth, that God manifests Himself in this world as Sri Guru. He is a Prakash, a manifestation of the Supreme Lord. But to understand perfectly and clearly, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur points out that Sri Guru has another aspect. And what is that? Kintu Prapuya Priya Evatasya. Although he is a manifestation of the Supreme Lord, uh, he does not consider himself such. He never tells that I am God or I am a manifestation of God. No. Uh, because he is the most intimate, beloved servant of the Supreme Lord. And therefore, he is known as the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead. So the principle of service is taught by Guru. The original Guru of all Gurus is the first expansion of Bhagavan Sri Krishna in the transcendental spiritual world known as Sri Baladev Prabhu. And Sri Baladev Prabhu is called Akanda Guru Tattva, the undivided principle of Guru. So Sri Baladev Prabhu manifests the whole a uh, spiritual world and material worlds by dint of his own personal expansions and incarnations. And Sri Baladev Prabhu also manifests as the Paramatma within the heart of every living being. And that Paramatma who is giving direction to each conditioned soul, but the conditioned soul is not able to hear the instructions of Paramatma, then that same principle of Guru manifests externally as Mahant Swarup, as a uh, exalted devotee, a pure devotee. And he comes into this world and he teaches the instructions that the Supreme Lord himself has given in all the Vedic literatures. So those transcendental instructions given in the Vedas are very, very vast. They cover so many truths. Uh, and in our disciplic succession, coming down from Bhagavan Sri Krishna to Lord Brahma, and coming down to Srila Vyasadeva, coming down to Sri Madhvacharya, and coming down in an unbroken line of disciplic succession, all the most confidential truths of all Vedic knowledge are given, uh, especially in the Srimad Bhagavatam 
which we are so fortunately hearing from our Sri Guru Dev. So, this disciplic succession that we are coming in is very, very special because there are four Vaishnava Sampradayas in which this divine truth comes down into the material world. These four Vaishnava Sampradayas coming from Sri Madhvacharya, uh, Sri Ramanujacharya, Sri Vishnu Swami, and Sri Nimbaditya. They are giving this knowledge of the Vedas and they are engaging all the conditioned souls in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they are teaching the process of regulated devotion called Vaidhi Bhakti, by which the conditioned souls can begin to engage themselves in eternal, in practices of pure devotion. But Bhagavan Sri Krishna, although he himself appeared here 5,000 years ago in this world and exhibited his eternal pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham, and all those pastimes are given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So he demonstrated his eternal spiritual leelas and pastimes from the spiritual world and he brought his eternal associates into this world and he sported freely and showed his rasa-filled pastimes to attract the hearts of all the souls of this world. And then he wound up his pastimes and he uh, continued on in his uh, journeys through the material universes exhibiting his pastimes. But Sri Krishna at that time he did not freely distribute this highest praying which is known only in Braja Vrindavan to his eternal associates, the Vrijbhasis, his eternal personal associates and family members. Uh, so that highest truth which is given in Srimad Bhagavatam was somewhat concealed. Therefore, Sri Krishna Chandra himself came down into this world in this Kali Yuga and combined with his internal potency, Srimati Radharani, he manifested himself as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Rupa Goswami has given the identity of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in one verse that he composed to glorify him. There he told, Anarpitachadim chirat karunaya vatirna kalo samarpaitum unatujvala rasam svabhakti shriyam hari purata sundara dyuti kadamba sandhi pita sada hridaya kandare spuratuva sachinandanaha. That Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is descending into this world. Uh, after a very, very long time period, Anarpitacharim Charat, he has given, he has come to give in Kali Yuga that which has not been given previously. And he has come to give Unna to Ujvala Raswa Bhakti Shriyam. To understand just this one line, what is it that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give to all Jiva souls? He empowered Srila Rupa Goswami and his associates, Srila Sanatana Goswami, and all the six Goswamis, his personal disciples, he empowered them to manifest uh, this mission in this material world. And as Srila Gurudev told, that unless someone understands what is the mission of this Rupanuga, Guru Varga, then he cannot truly understand the glories of Guru Tattva and really the highest glory of Vyas Puja. So Srila Rupa Goswami is glorified in our disciple succession as having fulfilled the inner heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And therefore Naratam Das Thakur has prayed, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamai Yam Dadati Swa Padantikam. Here he is telling, and all of our acharyas in our disciple succession are telling this about Rupa Goswami that he is the one, he is the personality who has fulfilled the manobhishta, the inner heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by establishing within this material world what he wanted to give to all the jiva souls. And that he gave in all of his divine literatures, 
such as Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Sri Ujjwala Nilamani, Lalita Madhava, Vidagda Madhava, and so many other literatures. So, in our disciplic succession, all of our acharyas are called Rupa Nuga because they are actually truly following internally all the internal moods that Srila Rupa Goswami has manifested and his divine identity as the eternal maidservant of Srimati Radhika in the form of Sri Rupa Manjari and also they are following him externally as he exhibited his Sadam Bhajan in this world as Sri Rupa Goswami living in Brajaprindavan town Sakya Purvaka Nama Gana Nati Bhi Kala Vasani Krito Nidra Hara Vihara Kadi Vijito Chatyanta Dino Chayo Radha Krishna Gunasmriter Maturi Manam Dena Sam Mohito Bande Rupa Sanata No Raguya Goshi Jiva Gopala Ko So the six Goswamis headed by Rupa Goswami they all lived in Vrindavan Dham, demonstrating to the Jiva souls how they can do bhajan, how they can absorb themselves day and night in the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna. They manifested these eternal pastimes. H.I. Gosai Javi Braje Koilovas Radha Krishna Nityalila Korilo Prakash. And they went and manifested the eternal pastimes in Braj, writing their literatures discovering all the holy places of those pastimes and teaching the conditioned souls how they may attain the eternal service of Radha and Krishna and Braja Vrindavan Dham. So in our Rupa Nuga uh, disciplic succession, our acharyas are all bringing us there to Vrindavan. They are teaching us how ultimately we must live there. We must absorb ourselves 24 hours a day as Rupa Goswami taught in his Upadeshamrita. Tannam Rupa Charitadi Sukirtananu Smrityo Kramena Rasanam Anasini Yojya Tishtam Prajay Tat Anuragi Jananugami Kalam Nayeda Kilam Iti Upadesha Sadam. The essence of all the instructions given in all the Shastras Rupa Goswami has given in this verse. How to live in Vrindavan Dham under the guidance of a Rasi Rupa Nuga Vaishnava who is himself following the eternal associates and their moods in the eternal Nitya Dham. So our beloved Gurudev at this present time in this history of the dissemination of the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu throughout this world he is the personality who is establishing this mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami in this world for all Vaishnavas present and future. By giving these important literatures to the world, he is translating these literatures. He is giving authentic uh, commentaries on these literatures so that all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas may understand what is the message of Srila Rupa Goswami? How can we come in the line of Rupa Nuga Vaishnavism? So that contribution which our Guru Dev is giving is similar to what Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur did 200 years ago. Uh, at that time, Gaudiya Vaishnavism was being challenged. And in Jaipur, the king of Jaipur also, uh, he was becoming influenced by other smart Brahmanas. They wanted to stop the worship of Shimati Radharani. Uh, and they were saying that the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, it is not authentic, uh, it is just some concoction. We don't accept it. So Srila Vishana Chakravarti Thakur at that time, he sent his disciple Baladeva to Bhushan Prabhu. And there he had debates with all the scholars and pundits, and he wrote the commentary on Vedanta Sutra, Sri Govinda Pashya. And he defeated all of them. He established this uh, position of the worship of Radha Govinda. And in that way, under the guidance of Srila Vishana Chakravarti Thakur, he again maintained and preserved this mission, this disciple succession. And Srila Vishana Chakravarti Thakur himself, by his all of his commentaries and all the literatures that he has written, such as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, such as Ujvala Nilamani Kira and uh, Bhagavatam Brihat Bhagavatam Rita Kana. He has shown what all the teachings of the Goswamis were, and he manifested those teachings and many, many other literatures. He commented his commentaries on the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
and he showed that the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Braja Vrindavan, exhibited in the mood of Paraki above, is supported in Srimad Bhagavatam. And he preserved this knowledge of this uh, process of serving Radha and Krishna in their divine abode in the mood of separation as the Braja Gopis had manifested in Vrindavan. So our Guru Dave, in the present day, he is performing a similar activity because in our Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, just as Krishna says in Gita, Sakale Neha Mahata Yogo Nashta Parantapa, this knowledge comes into this world, but in course of time, there is an influence which causes it to be deviated and derailed. So our Gurudev has come at this point in time to teach all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas what is the actual essence of the teachings of Rupa Goswami. He is working day and night to give these literatures. He is constantly writing these books and staying in this world for this purpose. So it is our greatest good fortune that on this Vyas Puja day, we are in the presence of the Vaishnava Sarva Poma, the uh, su superior Vaishnava in all the world today, amongst the Gaudiya Sampradaya, who is giving the greatest contribution to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami Sampradaya. And we have the opportunity to honor him on this Vyas Puja day. So I am praying at his lotus feet uh, that he will shower his causeless mercy upon us and one day enable us to have this divine knowledge that he is giving to the whole world manifest within our heart so that one day we may also become Rupa Nuga and serve his divine lotus feet eternally. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pachari Nini Vishesha Sanyavari Paschatya Vishivarani Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Sri Sima Krafti Vedanta Snanayam First of all, I offer my most humble obeisances at the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru Sri Sima A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada and then again, I offer my most humble obeisances at the lotus feet of my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru, Sri Sima Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Tridandi Sanyasita and unto all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis present here today and around the world who are looking in. I have written one poem that I wanted to read. More longer. I have written one poem which I wanted to read to Srila Gurudev. This is in honor of his Vyasa Puja. Glories to Gurudev, our Sri Guru, manifest in February when the moon was new, heralding the arrival of a messenger from above, bringing Sri Radha's divine service and love. O beloved servant of Acharya Keshari, O devoted follower of Bhaktivedanta Swami, you are the servant and protector of the Gaudiya Siddhanta and the foremost Prashishya of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta. One of Rupa Manjari's dearest, distributing for free the way to Raganuga from Vaidhi Bhakti. By being Rupa Nuga, following Rupa Goswami, and hearing Hari Kata from a pure devotee. The injection of Leela Kata through the ear to the heart from the lips of a sadhu is how Prema Bhakti starts. 
by gradually dispelling the three material modes and revealing Sri Radha's sweet loving abode. The price of entry to serve Sri Radhe is by wearing the necklace of Trinavati, by sincerely repeating to all that you see, there is no fault in anyone, only bad qualities in me. This is the mantra one must constantly repeat to obtain the service of Sri Radha's lotus feet while being under guidance with the sadhu's mercy who is a favored maid servant of Sri Rupa Manjar. O Gurudev, dear Gurudev, forget not this lost soul who for countless births has refused to let go of Maya's innumerable illusory attractions to serve Sri Radha instead to her full satisfaction. I am not qualified for your divine mercy, and yet it is your divine mercy I desire to get. Jagai, Madai, and Valmiki all receive their Guru's mercy and their perfection they achieve. I am more fallen than all mentioned before, for I willingly sinned while knowing the score. Weeping at your feet, I humbly implore thee, in your eternal service, please kindly engage me. So on your Vyasa Puja day, I most humbly pray, with a straw between my teeth, while before you I lay, that in this and my future births, I will never go astray, but under yours and Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet, I will always stay. I remain, as always, your most worthless servant, Bhagavad Gita So, the conception of worshipping Sri Guru is given in our understanding who is Sri Guru is given in the 11th canto of Sriman Bhagavatam by Pipala, who is one of the nine Navyogendras, the Navyogendras. And he gives one verse there to Maharaj Nenim. Asma Guru Prapadyeta Jignashu Shreya Uttama Sapte Pare Chanishna Tam Brahmanya Upasamshaya. So there he explained that first Tasma, therefore, because previously two other Navyogendras, his brothers, they gave so much information about what is the suffering of samsara, of karma, of birth and rebirth, of difficulties in this material world. So he's saying, Tasma, therefore, now understanding this, what you are have to go through, what you are suffering in this material world, understanding this, Tasma Guru Papadyante, therefore you should accept the shelter of the lotus feet of a bona fide guru. And Jignashu Shreya Uttamam. You should Jignashu inquire about your Uttam. What is your ultimate good? What is the ultimate good in your life? What is the ultimate path and perfection for your life. This you should inquire. The qualities of such Sri Guru are as follows. Shabde Pare Chanishnatam. That Shabde, he understands Shabda Brahman, all of the Vedic literatures. He knows all the Vedic literatures that have been given, that have been written by Srila Vyasadev. He understands their explanations. He can give commentary and Siddhanta about them and he can explain them completely. Shabde Pare, and he has realized them. It is not just that he is a scholar, not that he is like a university scholar who has some Sanskrit degree and he can explain the meanings of the Sanskrit words by scholarship, but that he is Pare, he is realized of Param Brahma, of the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. And Brahmanya Upasamshayam, 
He is situated on the transcendental platform with this transcendental knowledge and is therefore not affected by the influence of the modes of material nature. He is not contaminated and he is never influenced to fall down from that position. He is always situated on the transcendental platform engaged in the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. So this instruction is given there. Why must one go to such a personality? Srila Narantam Das Thakur writes, Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sarma that at the lotus feet uh, of the Sri Guru, the lotus feet of the Sri Guru are full of Sri. Sri means praying, uh, praying for Radha and Krishna. So Sri Guru Charana Padma, these lotus feet are like Padma, like lotus flower. Why is that? Philip Maharaj explains that in the lakes there are these lotus flowers, padmas, and they are giving some pollen. The bees are collecting and they are making some honey. If you have any eye disease in Ayurveda, Padma Madhu will be placed upon your eyes and your vision will be restored. So, the Sri Guru's feet are called Padma, lotus flower, because the nectar of praying, which is emanating from those lotus feet, can be smeared upon the eyes and one can get uh, transcendental vision. Divya Drishti. One will understand the transcendental knowledge of the Vedic literature. Prema Bhakti Jaha Hoite, Avidya Vinasha Goite. All avidya will be destroyed. Vede Gai Jaha Charito. All of the Vedas are declaring this and broadcasting this wonderful knowledge about Sri Guru, that Chakshushdan, that his, your vision, your eyes, will be completely cleansed of all material contamination and one will be able to get praying. Prema Bhakti Jaha Vaite, because the transcendental body of the pure devotee is emanating this praying. It is explained that the pure devotee Srila Prabhupada explains in one purport that although the spiritual master, the pure devotee, the Mahabharata, is living with inside this body, he is not connected to the material body. Just like a coconut which has dried up off of the tree, when the coconut dries up inside, that nut is still inside, but it dries up and he rolls around. You can hear it, you can shake it. It's in there, but yet it is not connected. So he said, similarly, the spiritual master is living within this body. The pure devotee, the Mahabharata, is living within this body, but yet he's not connected to this material world. He's completely transcended to the material world. But by his mere presence, the body becomes chinmaya sarir, transcendental body, transcendentally purified, transcendentalized, spiritualized. Therefore, we should understand that the body of the spiritual master is not like the body of any ordinary person. He does not take birth, he manifests. And he does not die, he disappears, he becomes unmanifest. His pastimes are eternal. He is manifest and he is unmanifest. And when he comes, he comes for only one purpose, to give this praying, this Shri, in order to save the fallen conditioned souls from the material contamination of this material world and to engage them in the eternal service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Without the mercy of the spiritual master, one can never get yasya prasada bhagavat prasada yasya prasada nagati vrutti. You can never get Radha and Krishna without the mercy of the spiritual master. One who satisfies the spiritual master, the external manifestation of Godhead, one who satisfies his lotus feet, who gives all love and affection and devotion to his Guru Maharaj. That person, <clears throat> he will get everything and he will attain the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and get their mercy. Thank you very much.
राधा सम्मुख संसुप्ति सखी संग निवास तम हम सतत वंदे माधव स्वय विग्रह हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई बी माय हम्बल ऑबिसेंसेस एंड द लोटस स्पीड ऑफ माय परमानंद गुरु पाद पद्म ओम विष्णु पाद अष्टोत्तर सदस्यमा ग्रुप की वेदांत स्वयं बाबा मनु सिंह महाराज एंड ओम विष्णु पाद परिव्रज आचार्य वर्ज्य अष्टोत्तर सदस्यम ग्रुप की वेदांत स्वयं नारायण सिंह महाराज आई बी माय ऑबिसेंसेस ऑल कृष्ण वर्ष एंड कृष्ण बीस वी असेंबल्ड हियर टू ऑब्जर्व बेस्ट पूजा रेड बाय द दिसम नासिस so look at the word of me to speak something about bas puja last year so guru dev was telling today is my bas puja my bas puja has two meanings my bas puja means today i have to do bas puja by my own hand another meaning my bas puja means worship of myself the disciple lord sri shri guru dev so who is bas and if we not do bas puja what will happen for us we have to know details all this thing sila param guru de nitya lila prasun vishnu pad sila bhakti pradhan ke sarva sai maharaj he has told in his own lecture in his own article published in gauriya patrika he told in this world which knowledge you are carrying it all comes from the bas de what we as Since the discovery of science, of medical science, and other physics, chemistry, all are dated to Bas Day. Nowadays, this electronics do electronics age, but this electronics was as before also in the upper age. When Sila Sukhdev Goswami was cast by Swami Krishi, sorry, Parichit Maharaj cast by. Son of Swami Krishna Singh Rishi. At that time, where was computer? Where was internet? How all humanities and rishis they assembled there in a few minutes? How they came? Where the computer development was there? Who internet? Who sent email to them? Even not only India. Some came from Mongolia near China. Some came from Russia, Caspian Sea, Caspian Sea. How they came there? So seeing all these things. One Western philosopher, one of the bishop told, India guided by God can lead the world back to sanity. Only India can lead the world. None can lead the world because which we have seen the prosperity and progress of science is perishable, not permanent. So if all the world follow India, means India's philosophy, then they can uh, get to sanity. Otherwise, not. Once we go to the way for preaching. First time in Western country, when Sri Guru Dev was in New Jersey, New York, about five or six one group came to ask Guru Dev, "Why you came from India? India is a poor country and they are living under poverty. How they can help to other very progressed country like America?" Then Guru Dev told, "Yes, it may be true, but I from birth I know how to give. Maybe our minister or president can ask for you for begging." I never learned this from my birth. Then they asked, "What you can give the world?" Then Guru Dev told, "Nowadays, the most problem is sound pollution. So if you think Guru Dev, Guru Dev, I am giving one example. If there is a pond and if there is a stone, what will be the result?" Then they had to told that some ripple will come and it will subside. Guru Dev said, "No, ripple will come one after another, of from bigger, smaller, and smaller." Although we cannot see our open eyes, but if you look, if you look through machine, you can understand that raw waves are coming and touching the each and every corner of the pond. Then some say, in same way, which we are doing Hari Katha or the Kirtan, it or waves will go all over the world and then some say sound pollution. Then he told all these scientists, I am one of them in that group. Guru Dev, no, I am not a scientist. Which I heard from my Guru Dev, and which I realized by the Bhajan, I told this. He told, without scientists, none can say this. 
Then Buddha told, are you scientist? Then he began to laugh. He told, he is not, I am only scientist. All six, we are scientists. Then Buddha told, what is your identification? He told, I was disciple of Sri Bhaktan Sami Maharaj and took Sarnas from Buddha Sridhar Maharaj. His name was what Madhav Puri. Yeah, Madhav Puri. Then he told that we have heard about you, so he came to test you. So then he told, I am giving you an example. We travel all over the world and recorded so many sounds. And then he played in laboratory. So in laboratory, any, any kind of sound, it makes sound pollution higher. When he played the kirtan, then sound pollution going down. They told, oh, you can preach all over the world very easily and a very fast man can check you. So, he can see even what science cannot do, even other millennium cannot do by another Sankirtan, by Sankirtan you can do that. So, Srila Sankirtan Goswami was told that there is so many processes of the new bhajan, but among them, what is the best? So, Krishna Sanana, Vida Kirtan Esu, Tannama Sankirtan, Ego Dutham. Although there are so many processes, the best is Hariram Sankirtan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told also, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So, by that, we can get Prema Bhakti only by Sankirtan. Because it is mentioned by, because it is mentioned by Srila Bhakti Sathagur Prabhupada also. Kirtan Prabhavesh Maran Haive Sekala Ninjan Bhajana Sambha. If you do Kirtan, then your mind will be fixed, then you can do Nirjan Bhajan, do Bhajan being alone. alone. And you have heard from Sipa uh, Pujari Sakrani Didi. He was telling from the viewpoint of geometry about bass. When you make, uh, draw a circle, so if any line touch the both end of the circle, touching the center point, then it's called diameter. So, who is the diameter? Sadhguru is diameter. The who is in center point. And one end is material world, another is spiritual world. Who can make connection? They call Sadhguru. And his puja is called Vyas Puja. Vyas Dev was Sattari Savadar of Bhagavan. Even nowadays, we are spreading his message. And being his representative, give the world Harinam Sankirtan and pure bhakti. They are the incarnation of Vyas Dev. They are puja called Vyas Puja. Although, all over India, the appearance of Vyas Dev, they observe Vyas Puja. But in specialty of Gauri Sampradaya, they observe Vyas Puja that day also. And the Vyas Puja, the appearance day of their own Guru Dev. So both they are, in both ways they are profitable. And he have heard from Vyas Puja Sampradaya Didi, that he gave on analogy of Arunya Nuttava Upavanyan Dhaumo. So what they receive? They receive only Atma Gyan, not more than that. Their destination not going beyond Vaikuntha. And who is our Rupanuva Guru Varga? What they are doing? They are giving us Krishna Setamar, Krishna Vite Bara, Tomara Sakati Ache, Amitra Kangal, Krishna Krishna Bali Dhai Tava Pache Pache. Krishna is their eternal asset. And they can give this asset to others. But in previous millennia, which we have heard from different speakers, they cannot give this destination going beyond Vaikuntha. We have seen our line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Lodumba Sampar said Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it is mentioned by Sri Kavi Karnapur, Priya Sarupe Daita Sarupe. And by Sri Naratam Thakur, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the name of Bhutale. What do you say? He is giving. He is giving Rupanuga Marga. By that, one can attend the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapu sometime. Although we are seeing, Guru is sitting like among us and he is, he is doing all activity like ourselves, but he is not at all. Like us sitting here and we may think different, different things. None can understand seeing our face what we are doing. In the same way, what Guru Varga, Supanga Guru Varga, being in this world, what they are doing? Nikunja Juno Rakikeli Siddhai Ya Jalidi Yukti Rapeksa Niya Tatta Didaksa Tati Valla Vasya Bande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam They are always making conspiracy or making some discussion how to bring Vrindamandan Samsundar from the camp of Chandravali and they are admitting of Radha Kapurani This is their main duty Although they are being here they are helping us same time they are doing service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapu, same time being our, among us. 
So in Pranamantra Gunada it mentioned that Radhika is the Atmane. He is near and dear to Srimati Radhika. And today, Pujya Pujya Janki uh, was doing Kirtan and uh, praying his uh, Lotus Suit of Gurudev that Juga Acharya Prabhu Mande Narayana Karuna Alaya Radha Dasya Lohan Dattva Tarayati Bhavan Atrayam That means Juga Acharya Gurudev wants in Vajamandal Parikrama He reward by Juga Acharya Acharya Millennium one, some, one company of Delhi and who is Guru of Varsana Temple, Deepak Bhatta all the combined they give this title to Siva Guru Dev. So someone composed this slok, Juga Acharya Prabhu Mande. I put down the lotus feet of Juga Acharya, who is Narayana Karnalayam. He is the abode of Matsi. And what he is giving in this world? Radhada Srila Bhandattva. Whoever listening, whoever serving, they can achieve the green for mad servants of Radhika. And by this he is Tarayati Bhavanattva means Levered the three, uh, three world. We have seen nowadays, even in Gaudiya Sampradaya, they hesitate to give this thing to public mass. But Srila Gurudev, body is dealing who is qualified, they can achieve this. Who is not qualified, they will not achieve this. Nanadasa. So, like Krishna Sankara Yasami told, I want to give this don donation to everyone, but I am fearing who can get this. But they told, oh, I have no problem now. Because who is qualified, they can get the mango, mango blossom, but all, all not. In the same way, Gurudev has this idea, who is getting for his, from his Gurudev and from his realization, that who is he donating? The maid servant is also the Radhika, but Bhavala is also Manjari Bhav. Who is qualified, they can achieve, and other cannot achieve that. So if someone serves the Gurudev, and Gurudev told the Guru Puja is the backbone of Bhakti. If someone wants to attain Bhakti and do Guru Puja and follow Sri Gurudev, what they will gain? Like Gurudev is serving Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapil at the same time. So, under guidance of Gurudev and uh, uh, the control of Guru Goswami Parat Kansar, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and under guidance of Gurudev and under Guidance of Rupanjali Goswami and Rupanjali, they can serve Divine Kapil and Chaitanya at the same time. So, we have ever want to follow Sri Gurudev and listen his lecture, they can understand. But what purpose Gurudev come down in this world from spiritual kai and they can make their life fulfilled? Hare Krishna. Bancha Kapil Namo Vishipadaya Radhikaya Priyatline Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Naraya Niti Namine Shri Krishna Lakatane Sidakshan Odaya Madri Vinay Sriptam Varam Vedana Purushamantan Narayanam Tom Chidi Shalamami I offer my obeisances millions and millions of times at the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev. Om Vishnu Pad Params of Vrishta Mastratana Shri Shiman Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj who so, has so kindly given me shelter and accepted me as his own. Oh my eighth Goswami, Shastra says that Sri Guru is the sum total of all the demigods, but you are much more than that. You are the sum total of all our Goswamis and all our Acharyas. You are my Raghunath Das. You are my Rupa Goswami. You are my Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. 
You are my Bhakti Vinod. You are my Srila Keshava Maharaj. You are my Prabhupada. Such a legacy you are leaving for us. Who can count the mountain of treasures you are heaping upon our heads? Revealing such things that most people are afraid to even utter privately. You have made smaragalaram, smaragalarakandinam, mahashirasamandinam, dehiparapalavam. You've made this a household word, spreading your beautiful Seva Kunj painting all over the world. You're no less than any of our other Goswamis. Like Raghunath Das, you ran away from home. Raghunath Das ran away so many times and his parents kept bringing him back. They didn't want to give him up. Finally, he was able to get away. You also, you ran away from home, came to the mat. Then your family came and got you. You sent 15 elders from your village, your parents, your uncles, your aunties, village elders, they all came to Param Gurudev and said, please give him back. He's got family, he's got children, you can't keep him. He's, he belongs to us. So Param Gurudev, Param Gurudev sent you back. Then you stayed with them some time. And I remember you said, when you finally, you were thinking how to get away. Finally, your father broke your kanti mala, and that was the last straw. So that night, you stuffed your bed with pillows, and like a cat, you slipped out of the house very quietly. And very bravely, without any fear at all, you went through a very fearsome jungle where no one would enter at night, a jungle filled with ghosts. And there you were, with just just your doki and a chudder, not even a, a kurta, not any paisa in your pocket, only your Hari Nam Mala and chanting Hare Krishna, you made your way through that fearsome jungle where no one else would enter. So you are my Raghunath Das. You are my Vishwanath Chakravati Chakur. Krishna tells the gopis that he'll take them across Manasi Ganga with all of their yoga and butter in his broken down old boat. So they had no other choice. They thought the boat looked a little bit unsafe. But then halfway across, he said, don't worry, come, it'll be safe. But halfway across, you con Krishna conjured up a big ferocious storm and the, and the boat was about to capsize and all the gopis are terrified. And Krishna's laughing and says, well, you better throw all of your pots overboard. Still, the boat's not safe. So then Krishna says, all right, now your ornaments, absolutely everything that you can dispense with has to be thrown overboard. Even their bangles and earrings. And poor Srimati Radhika, she got so scared that she just jumped in his Krishna's arms for shelter. So how that Krishna, he tricked Srimati Radhika into getting his, her embrace. Oh, Khan, well, Kandari, you are no less than him. You're just like that, Krishna. You invite all these poor, helpless, innocent people to come in your boat. I will take you across the Bab Sagara. Don't worry, everyone. Come, Prabhu, come. There's a space for you here. Mataji, come. I will provide everything you need. You don't have to worry for anything. Baby, come. Come. Here, there's a place for you. So then you say, don't worry, this is a safe boat. Then, when we get away from the shore and it's too far to go back, you start rocking the boat. <laughs> and then you sit there laughing, <laughs> smiling at everyone and say, all right, it looks like it's getting a little dangerous. You've got to throw all your excess baggage overboard. What? Yes. Get rid of all those inartas, all that calm, crow, low, not sorry. Give up all your attachments, wife, children, par old parents, your sweet dog, your beautiful gardens, your beautiful homes, your important jobs, your position in society. You've just got to dump it all. Well, what can we do? You know, there we are. We're helpless. We're way out in the middle. We have no choice. So we're forced to give up these things and jump into your arms for protection. Otherwise, what will happen? So just like that, Krishna, you trick us also. 
So you also, Saksha Darhi Thena Samastra Shastriya, you are my Vishwanath Charpavati Thakur. You are my Bhakti Vinod Thakur, giving us Vinod Dada, the conception of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which flows continuously and cannot be checked by anyone. Now it is coming through you, Vinod, giving pleasure to Sri Yuga, as in Bhakti Vinod, Vinod Brahmachari, Vinod Vanjari. This is our family business, giving pleasure, pleasure to Sri Yuga. So you now are carrying on this Bhakti Vinod, it's definitely flowing through you, and you're establishing all around the world Radha Vinod Bihari. You're not, you're not just giving that blackish ray Sham who cavorts with millions of girls. No, not that beautiful Radha Shoma Sundar that Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada established up the road at Krishna Balaram Mandir, who is there with Lalita and Vishaka. No, Lalita and Vishaka are not even allowed in the presence of Radha Vinod Bihari. We're talking about that Rajendra Nanda, who has, got, has forgotten all those other girls, and he's lost in the deepest embrace of his Daita. That Rajendra Nanda who's fully covered with Srimati Radhika's Anikanti in the height of amorous fulfillment. I remember quite some years ago, you gave a wonderful class in Matuda from Chaitanya Charitamrita explaining what is the meaning of Kanti, Srimati Radhika's Kanti, that Shoba, that beautiful glow on the face of Srimati Radhika, she becomes so full and satisfied after her meeting with Sri Krishna. So this is Radhika known in Hari. When Radhika, Srimati Radhika embraces Krishna in such a way that every part of his body is covered, someone will say, all right, you know, I'm going to embrace you. So let's say we're holding hands. The palm of my hand is being covered by, by you, but the back side of my hand is still not covered. So Krishna is saying to Srimati Radhika, oh Priya, please, I want you to cover me completely with your embrace. Can you do that? So she says, yes, but this is completely impossible. But Srimati Radhika, she's able to please him, and she's able to give that full, complete embrace. This is Radha Vinod Bihari, and this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the, the Radha, um, when Mahaprabhu revealed himself to Radha Ramananda. This is the Radha and Krishna that he revealed. It is Radha Vinod Bihari. And this is the concept that you're spreading all over the world. Not if now, Radha Vinod Bihari is living in the houses of so many devotees all over the world. And this is the very purest, highest concept of love that you're giving to the whole world now. Wholesale, it's so inconceivable. So you are, are my Vishnu Chakrapati Thakur. You are my, my Rai Ramananda. You are my Bhakti Vinod. And this is the actual message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the message that now you're substantiating for posterity, dedicating yourself to leaving such a to leaving a great literary legacy to the whole world. Fairly recently you were discussing Madhuri Padambini and you explained the meaning of Megamala. That a Megamala is the cloud bank that comes in, and pours its rain down on the on the desert, refreshing the dried up cheese. You said that Megamala is actually a garland of all the Goswami's writings. So now there's a new Megamala on the horizon. All of your books that you're writing for the whole world. And, and in this way, your, your books, they're just flowing from your fingertips now. Your books, they're released for the cool, refreshing rains of the amorous um, Adi Ras that's flowing down from below Grudge now, extinguishing the fire of material dust in our hearts in which we've been burning up for millions and millions of births, and this is what you're giving to the world now. Years ago, you also I remember you told us that Sanatan Goswami, he's the sagar, the full ocean of all Bhagavad Tattva, all the truths about Sri Bhagavan and Bhakti. And at the same time, you told us that Rupa Goswami is the Rasaku, the deep well of Ras, of loving exchanges of Krishna with the Rajabhasis. So you are also that Rasaku. You are my Rupa Goswami. You are